Hey guys, it's story time. So if you guys know me, you probably heard a little bit about my uncle Byron Rumford. But if you don't know me, I'm gonna tell you about him. So my uncle Byron was a legislator. He was born in Arizona and he went to a segregated high school. And at the age of 18, he decided to move to San Francisco where he thought things were a little bit different. Good morning. When he came to San Francisco, he attended the School of Pharmacy at UC San Francisco and became a member of the Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity. At the age of 25, Uncle Byron passed the State of California Employment Examination and that was in 1933 when not a lot of black people were working for the State of California. So after Uncle Byron successfully passed that test, he went on to take the State Board of California Pharmaceutical Investigator Examination and he ended up taking this examination twice. So he passed the written part of the examination two times and then on the oral part he failed two times. So after that he decided to switch it up a little bit and he went to go take a test for the State of California Venereal Disease Investigator and the same thing ended up happening. He passed the written exam and then he failed the oral exam. So he figured out that what they were doing to black candidates were literally asking them questions about Joe Lewis. They were asking him questions about the weather in Florida and he lives in California. They were asking black people questions on the oral part of the examinations that had absolutely, absolutely nothing to do with the positions that they were applying for. So they continued to fail them over and over and over again. So when Uncle Byron figured that out, he went to a board member who actually happened to be a friend of his and he explained what was going on to the board member and the board member appealed their decision to fell um, Uncle Byron based on the irrelevant questions that were being asked during the test. He won the appeal and he was granted his state certification. So after that he went on to be hired at Highland Hospital um, in Oakland and he was the first African American to be hired at that hospital. He was hired as an assistant pharmacist and the pharmacist that he was working under was a very racist man and he really didn't want Uncle Byron working there because he was black of course and he said oh you know he's gonna come in here and he's gonna start trouble <laughs> so what Uncle Byron did was he decided to get from underneath that man and he went and he opened his own pharmacy called Rumford's Pharmacy so Uncle Byron's pharmacy was a pharmacy located in the black community. His pharmacy actually became the meeting spot to talk politics in the black community. And he would even post um, voting recommendations in his pharmacy so that black people were educated and knew exactly what they were voting for and exactly how to vote for it. So back then, there wasn't a, a big enough population in the black community for black people to vote black people into office. So what they did was a democratic white man would come to the black communities and they would look and see who was into politics in the black communities and they would go and promote the person that they felt best for the job. Uncle Byron was elected to the state assembly in 1948 and he became an effective legislator immediately. He also was the first black man to hold public office in Northern California. He was a lot of firsts. He wrote bills against job discrimination in the schools and he also made it illegal for car insurance companies to refuse uh, to insure black people because that's what they did. Shortly after that, his legislation became the Rumford Fair Housing Act of 1963. The act banned racial discrimination against the renting and the selling of real estate in the state of California. White people were so upset about that. 
they were so upset that they came up with a whole proposition to overturn his act. The proposition that they came up with was Prop 14. And you know, it ended up passing. It did end up passing. But guess what? The California Supreme Court overturned it. So <laughs> it was back in full effect. And two years later, as a part of the Civil Rights Act of 1968, fair housing became a nationwide law. I just want to give a shout out to my uncle. You are the real MVP. You really, really stepped it up and you made a way for people of all colors to be equal in everything that we do as it should be because we're in America, right? Anyways, I just wanted to give you guys a quick little backstory about who he is, what he did for us, and I want you to know that I have every intention of keeping his work going. So hopefully today you guys were able to get a little bit of education, learn something new that you didn't know before. Good morning. But hey, don't take my word for it. Look him up. You might find some cool things about him that I didn't go over in this video and uh, hopefully be inspired to move forward and do the right thing. <laughs> Bye y'all.